안녕하세요. You are going to learn how to ask about the degree, the quantity, the numbers in Korean, and a couple more things in this video. Let's go. Okay then, let's learn how to ask about the degree or sometimes quantity using how. How plus a verb. What kinds of questions belong to this category in English? Questions like, how long will you be staying? Or, how often do you go swimming? How many hot dogs can you eat in an hour? Now understand what we are going to learn this page? We didn't learn about this when we learned about the interrogative how because we have to use a totally different translation even though we use the same interrogative how in English. Then what is the Korean word we should use for this usage? 얼마나 얼마나 It's an adverb. Again, it's an adverb, as how is. Please listen carefully, it's more difficult than you think. First of all, 얼마나 is a Korean word for one of the usages of the interrogative how. It's not a direct translation of the interrogative how. There's no English word that exactly works like this Korean word 얼마나. So you better try to understand the meaning of the Korean word itself then look for the English translation. 얼마나 is from the two-letter word 얼마. 얼마 is actually a noun which is normally used to indicate the quantity or degree which is not certain or fixed. Again, the first two letters 얼마 of 얼마나 is a noun and it is used to indicate the quantity or degree which is not certain or fixed. But you will not have many chances to use this noun 얼마 when you speak Korean. You need to reach the advanced level to use it properly. However, there is a one particular sentence in which you use this noun 얼마 all the time. You should not forget this until you pass away because it's a very important sentence. How much is it? 얼마예요? 얼마예요? 얼마 here is a noun. You can add only a noun before the predicate 예요 or 이에요. Remember? So, we can know that this noun 얼마 indicates the amount of money that is not certain or fixed too. When do we use the predicate 이다? 이에요, 예요. When we want to say something or someone is something, right? When the subject equals complement. Let's think about the sentence like, the price of it is $3. It's in the sentence pattern number 3. The price of it equals $3. And $3 part is a noun. The price of it, 은, $3, 예요. 그건 $3, 예요. So if you replace the complement $3 with the noun 얼마, which indicates the quantity degree or amount of money which is not certain or fixed, it will become 그것은 얼마예요? Or 그건 얼마예요? If you omit the subject, it becomes 얼마예요? Now you understand how it becomes 얼마예요, right? Perfect. Then why it changes to 얼마나 when it is used to mean how plus adverb? It's also boring grammatical stuff, but it's simply because only an adverb can modify an adverb. 얼마 is a noun originally, so we need to make it an adverb with adding 나 sound to it. That doesn't mean adding 나 sound to turn any noun into an adverb. Just remember that 얼마나 is an adverb in Korean. Let's see these two English sentences here. How fast is the car? How fast do you drive? Please listen carefully, it's still very difficult. The usage of how fast part in these two sentences is different. Instead of making complicated with all the grammatical terms, we'll make it a lot easier, especially for non-native English speakers. We used be verb in the first sentence. How fast 
is the car. And we used the verb drive in the second sentence. Now you can see the difference. If you turn the first sentence into a declarative sentence, it will be the car is fast. The word fast here is an adjective and it describes the subject car. How about the second sentence? If we turn the second sentence into a declarative sentence, it will be you drive fast. The word fast here is used as an adverb and it modifies the verb drive. Again, the point is, in the first sentence, how fast is the car? The word fast is an adjective which describes the subject car. And it should come at the end of the sentence as a predicate in a Korean sentence. We still use the adverb 얼마나 for how. The word fast here is an adjective. And it is going to be used as a predicate to end the sentence in Korean. So the basic form of the adjective fast is 빠르다. 빠르다. 얼마나 빠르다. Okay? In the second sentence, how fast do you drive? The word fast is an adverb which modifies the verb drive. Therefore, you just need to use the translation of the adverb fast. 빨리, 빨리 in a Korean sentence, okay? How fast? 얼마나 빨리, 얼마나 빨리, okay? Too difficult? When you want to translate the English sentences with how long, how fast, and etc., please see if the original English sentence has a be verb or not. If it does, probably how long or how fast part should be used as a predicate in a Korean sentence. And the word long or fast must be adjectives which are going to be used as a predicate like a verb. Okay? Let's see some examples together soon. Let's see the next sentence. How old are you? This English sentence also uses the interrogative how. But in Korean, there's another special interrogative that is used to ask about the numbers. Let's learn about it later again. It's a totally different word. Let's make a real sentence using what you've just learned. How fast is the KTX train? KTX is the abbreviation of Korea Train Express. It's high speed rail system in South Korea. As soon as you see the B verb, you should know that you are going to use how fast part as a predicate in Korean. Again, the word fast here is not an adverb, but it's an adjective, which can be used as a predicate in a Korean sentence. We keep repeating this because it can be very confusing for foreigners. Let's rearrange the words first. What is the subject? Yes, the KTX train. And? No, we don't need a B verb. We're just gonna use the adjective fast as a predicate. Where should we put the interrogative adverb how then? It modifies the adjective fast, therefore it of course comes right before the adjective fast. I know the KTX train is fast, but how fast? So how comes right before the adjective fast? As you know, a modifier comes right before the word that is modified in Korean. And you also know adverbs can modify the same adverbs and adjectives. Okay? You know that. So the sentence structure is, the KTX train is a subject. How fast? The KTX train. Train is 기차 or 열차. 열차. KTX is just KTX, but if you want to say high speed train, you can use 고속 열차. 고속 열차. 고속 means high speed. 고속 기차 would be fine too. Everybody can understand. Let's just use KTX 기차 this time. You can add the auxiliary particle 는 or the subject particle 가 
and you know it will change the nuance of the sentence. Since you are asking about the speed of the train, it will sound okay with the auxiliary particle nun because it can give the nuance of comparing to the other trains. It's just your choice though. But if you are not sure, just don't use any particle for a subject or an object. It's alright. How fast? How is 얼마나? 얼마나? Fast. To be fast. The basic form of the adjective fast is 빠르다. 빠르다. It seems like 빠르 is the stem. But let's take a closer look at it one more time together. If 빠르 is the stem, we were supposed to add 어요 to use the honorific suffix 요. But strangely, we should add 아요. It's an irregular change. Why do we add 아요 then? It's because the initial consonant 르, lear of the second block 르, goes down to the final of the first block. And it becomes 빨, 빨. Since this 빨 has the yang vowel 아, 아요 sound has come. But this is not the end. This 르 consonant affects on the 아 sound of 아요 too. And changes 아 sound to 라 sound, 라. So it becomes 빨라요, 빨라요. It's not 빨아요, be careful. 빨아요 means to suck, the basic form of which is 빨다. The basic form of the adjective fast is 빠르다. And this 르 sound in the middle affects on both the first block and the a uh, block of a uh, yo sound. Let's learn more about the irregular conjugations in lesson 6. Anyway, how fast? 얼마나 빨라요? It's a question using rising sound. 얼마나 빨라요? KTX 기차는 얼마나 빨라요? KTX 기차는 얼마나 빨라요? How fast is the KTX train? KTX 기차가 얼마나 빨라요? KTX 기차가 얼마나 빨라요? With the subject particle 가 is fine too. Let's see the next sentence. How fast did you learn Korean? We used the verb learn this time, which means this how fast part is going to be modified the verb learn in a Korean sentence. Let's rearrange the words first. The subject is you. Korean is an object. Let's keep that in mind. The verb learn must come at the end of the sentence without a doubt. If there is no other element in this sentence, the object would come right before the verb. But we have the how fast part which modifies the verb learn. So let's put how fast part right before the verb and put the object Korean right before how fast. So you Korean how fast learned. It's in the past tense. We don't need the pronoun you and Korean. Korean language is 한국어. 한국어. Or 한국말. 한국말. How fast. How. 얼마나. Fast. The adverb fast is 빨리. 빨리, 얼마나 빨리, learned. The basic form of the verb learn is 배우다, 배우다. You know how 배우다 becomes 배웠어요, 배웠어요 in the past tense, right? We know you've already reached that level. If you are wrong, please email us. So 한국어를 얼마나 빨리 배웠어요? 한국어를 얼마나 빨리 배웠어요? How fast did you learn Korean? What's the higher respect form then? 한국어를 얼마나 빨리 
배우셨어요? 한국어를 얼마나 빨리 배우셨어요? Perfect. Let's learn how to ask about numbers in Korean. Let's see the English sentences written on the left first. How old are you? What time is it? How many people are there? How many times do you go to school? What is 2 plus 3? We used a different interrogative for each sentence, right? But when you answer to these questions, you get to use numbers anyway. When you want to ask about numbers in Korean, you use this one letter word. 몇 몇 It's not an interrogative in Korean grammar, but you can think of it as one of the interrogatives. That's fine. We don't really care about grammatical things anyway. If you don't understand the meaning of this word, 몇 at all, you can think that it would be roughly translated into what number or how many in English. Anyway, 몇 is used to ask about the numbers which are uncertain. 몇 can be used alone or can be used with a unit of count or a unit of measure, not only in an answer but also in a question itself. Do you understand what it means? For example, when someone asks you, how old are you in English, how do you answer? Guess how old I am? Yeah, that's fine too, but we normally answer like, I'm nine years old. We use this years old part even in an interrogative sentence right after 몇 in Korean. Now, do you understand by unit of count or unit of measure? What time is it? When this question is being asked, we answer like it's one o'clock in English. We use a clock only at the full hour in English. But in Korean, we can use not only a clock, but also minutes or seconds in an interrogative sentence right after the word 몇 to ask about the time. Yes, 몇 is positioned right before a unit of count as which or what is positioned right before a noun. You can use this word 몇 even when you ask about someone's telephone number because of the fact that telephone number consists of numbers. We used what, 뭐 in lesson 5 part 2 to ask about someone's telephone number. But you can use 몇 to with a proper unit of count. We cannot use 몇 with an uncountable noun in Korean because of the fact that we need a unit to count or measure. We use how much when we ask about an uncountable noun in English, right? So how much itself cannot be translated into 몇. But instead, we have 얼마나 that we've just learned. 얼마나 is also used to ask about the quantity or degree which is not certain or fixed. Yes, you can use 얼마나 when you ask about the quantity of an uncountable noun. Let's talk about this later again. However, if you put an uncountable noun such as water or coffee in a container such as bottle or a cup, now you can use 몇 with the unit of count, such as a bottle or a cup. Now you understand this word 몇 crystal clear, don't you? We know. Then let's learn how to make an actual Korean sentence. Let's start with how old are you? First of all, we don't directly translate how old are you as you expected not. The Korean sentence is going to be more like what is your age? Even though we say what is your age in English, you understand what it means, right? Well, even though it makes you feel uncomfortable, but you still understand the question, don't you? Okay, anyway, the Korean sentence is going to be more like, what is your age? We might have to add a unit of counting someone's age. So, how the sentence structure is going to be? What is your age? Your age is what? Subject plus verb plus complement. It's in the English sentence pattern number three. Your age is the subject and comes first in the sentence. And then the complement, what, comes, and then a unit of counting someone's age comes right after. And then the verb, is, comes at the end. So sentence structure is going to be your age, what, plus unit of count, and is. 
your age. We don't need to translate the possessive your as we don't use the pronoun you in a Korean anaerobic sentence. Age is nai, nai. This is a subject. Yes, you can use either auxiliary particle nun or the subject particle ka. Let's just use the subject particle ka without explaining about the nuance. Na i ka. Na i ga. What? Yes, it's the time to use miat. Miat. You don't use mo this time even though there is what in the original English sentence. Then let's add a unit of counting someone's age in Korean. What is the unit of counting someone's age in Korean? There are actually two. A normal one and a higher respect one. But let's just learn the normal one this time. 살 살, Like 10 살, 10 years old. Or 25 살, 25 years old. Okay? And then the B verb is Your age is 10 years old. Subject equals complement. Yes, you can use E a yo or ye yo here again. And, and yes, again, you are right. We changed the original sentence, how old are you, to what is your age in the first place to use this predicate ida, ye yo, ye yo in Korean. But let's take a look at the study tip first. Korean people are normally very curious about someone else's age or sometimes even very sensitive about it. Because of the culture from Confucianism and the Korean language itself, which has the unique extensive system of honorifics. Therefore, it is much better to use the higher respect form when you ask about someone's age in Korea all the time, okay? It's no harm to be polite when you ask about someone's age in Korea. Keep that in mind. So let's not use the normal honorific form e e yo. Instead, let's use e se yo, which is the higher respect form of e e yo, even in a normal honorific sentence. So the entire sentence is going to be your age. Na i ga. What? Myot. Years old. Sal. Is. E se yo. 나이가 몇 살이세요? 나이가 몇 살이세요? 나이가 몇 살이세요? You can use this sentence to someone who looks equal to or younger than your age. 나이가 몇 살이세요? You can drop either the subject your age or the unit of counting age if you want. It's mainly because they both have the clear meaning of age. So when you use the subject your age, Na i, you can leave out the unit of counting age. Sal, it works the other way around too. When you use the unit of counting age, sal, you can drop the subject age. Na i, okay? So, na i ga myot iseyo, na i ga myot chiseyo is okay. And without the subject, myot sal iseyo, myot sal iseyo. It's okay too. If you say, 몇 이세요? 몇 치세요? The listener wouldn't be able to know what you're asking about. It's like you're saying, what number is it? In English, what number, what is it? So normally you need either of them at least. Let's take a look at the higher respect form. This higher respect form is quite important because you are likely to be asked this question by someone in Korea. Let's learn the one you can use to anyone, any stranger, or any acquaintance who looks younger, equal to, or slightly older. And then let's learn the one you can use to someone who is much older than you. The first one is your age. 나이가. This part is the same. What is. Do you remember the higher respect form of the interrogative what plus be verb? We learned about this in Lesson 5 Part 2 when we learned about the interrogative what. Yes, 어떻게 되세요? 어떻게 되세요? 어떻게 되세요? Which is roughly translated into how become. 어떻게 되세요? It's the higher respect form of 
What is? 어떻게 되세요? 나이가 어떻게 되세요? 나이가 어떻게 되세요? It's a semi-higher respect form you can use to anyone who looks younger, equal to, or slightly older than you. 나이가 어떻게 되세요? 나이가 어떻게 되세요? Let's see the next one. We use even a higher respect form of a noun age in this sentence, which is 연세. 연세. 연세가 어떻게 되세요? 연세가 어떻게 되세요? 연세가 어떻게 되세요? Yes, you can use this sentence to someone who is much older than you, but we know we don't really ask their age to elderly. Anyway, good to know. We recommend you use this sentence to someone who looks older than 50. Okay? Very good. Let's see how 어떻게 되세요, how become, became the higher respect form of 뭐예요, what is. It's almost impossible to logically explain about this in English because it's just how Koreans say. But please try to think it the way in which we are explaining here. Indirectness is the key word here. 어떻게 되세요 sounds more polite because it sounds asking the question indirectly. 어떻게 means how. 되세요 is the present simple form of the verb become in Korean. The basic form of the verb become in Korean is 되다. 되다. The basic higher respect form is 되시다. 되시다. The stem 되시 plus 어요 becomes 되셔요 or 되세요. You're gonna use this verb a lot when you reach a certain level. So if you ask someone his or her name using 어떻게 되세요 in Korean, it's like you use the sentence how does your name turn out to be instead of what is your name. It might not make sense in English at all, but the indirectness makes the sentence sound more polite in Korean. You don't use 어떻게 되세요 when the subject is just an object. You use 어떻게 되세요 only when the subject is something directly related to someone who deserves a higher respect on a refix. Plus, you can use 어떻게 되세요 for someone's name, age, or family but cannot use it for the name of someone's dog or the name of a restaurant. Please remember that. Let's see more examples with 몇. What time is it now? It looks like a very useful question. Of course, you have to learn how to count or tell numbers in Korean to understand the answer. We haven't taught you some basic things such as numbers, nor used wide range of vocabularies because Using and learning new words is nothing. You can learn them anywhere, anytime. What's important now for you is to understand the structure of Korean and understand how it works and try to be familiar with it. Because Korean is a total alien language to you. The vocab book from lesson 5 will contain more words than you expected anyway. You can study them yourself later. Let's get back to the sentence. What time is it now? Let's rearrange the words first. What is the English sentence pattern that this English sentence is in? What time is it? What is it? Yes, English pattern number three. Something is something. The subject equals the complement. You might be able to use the predicate 이다, 이에요, 예요 again. We'll see. The subject it comes first. We can see now, which is a time-related word. As we always did, let's put it right after the subject, it. And then the complement, what time, should come next. But you have to use the unit of count instead of the noun time in a Korean question sentence. Let's just put a clock that you use when you tell the full hour in English. So what plus unit of clock comes right after the time related word, now. And then the be verb is comes at the end of the sentence. It, now, what o'clock, is, 
First of all, you don't translate the pronoun it when it is used as a subject of a sentence when talking about occurrences of nature, such as weather, time, date, and distance. This is pretty important, please keep that in mind. So, we don't translate the subject it here. Now, 지금, 지금, what o'clock? Yes, we're gonna use 몇 for what. 시 is the unit of counting hour. 시 is the word you use when you tell the hour in Korean. But even though you just use 시, people will tell you the exact time because 시 also means time itself. You can use hour and minute together, even second, with 몇 to emphasize the fact that you want to know the exact time in Korean. But normally you just use 시. That's enough. So, 몇 시, 몇 시 is 예요? Why we use 예요 instead of 이에요? Yes, because the formal block 시 of 몇 시 doesn't have any final consonant. So the entire sentence is going to be 지금 몇 시예요? 지금 몇 시예요? What time is it now? 지금 몇 시예요? 지금 몇 시예요? Perfect. Let's see the next sentence. How many people are there? You can translate this sentence using 얼마나 too. Are you surprised? Yes, you can do that. But we are now learning about 몇. So let's use 몇 this time. What is the subject in this sentence? How many people are there? Yes, there is the subject, and it's a pronoun in this English sentence, not an adverb. Do you remember which Korean verb we used to tell something or someone is to be at a location or exists? Yes, 있다, 있다. We used verb 있다 to translate the sentences like there is something, or someone or something is in at on somewhere. Please tell me you remember this. So we are going to use this verb 있다 to translate this sentence since we can see there are. Let's rearrange the words together. It's quite simple. The pronoun there comes first because it's the subject in the original English sentence. And then how many people will come after the subject? And then let's put the be verb at the end of the sentence, even though the verb 있다 is not the translation of this be verb. We learned in lesson 5 part 3 that when there is used as a subject of the verb be or in front of certain verbs to say that something exists or does not exist, you don't have to translate it. Then when do you translate there? Yes, when it's used as an adverb to refer to a place which has already been mentioned or to indicate a place that you are pointing to or looking at in order to draw someone's attention to it. We translate there into 거기, 거기. Therefore, since there in this sentence is used as a pronoun, we don't have to translate it. However, it is natural to add an adverb here or there when you ask about the number of people in a certain place or directly indicate the place, for example, how many people are there in the park. So let's add an adverb there, 거기, in the Korean sentence. It's not a translation of the pronoun there. It's the translation of the adverb there and it's just added to point to the place we are talking about. 거기. It's clearer. Okay? How many? Whatever the English interrogative is, we use 몇, 몇 to ask about the numbers. People, the translation of the noun person is 사람, and the plural of person, people, is 사람들. But we're gonna use neither of them. We need to use the unit of counting people. In English, you use people as a unit of counting people when there are more than one person. But in Korean, 
There is a special unit that is used to count people. It's 명, 명. So 몇 명, 몇 명. And the verb 있다, 있다. The stem 있 plus 어요, 있어요, 있어요. 거기 몇 명, 있어요? 거기 몇명 있어요? How many people are there? 거기 몇명 있어요? We can make a higher respect form too. It would make you look like a such polite person who even shows some respect to anonymous people. You can turn the unit of counting 명 and the verb 있다, 있어요 into a higher respect form. The higher respect form the unit of count 명 is 분, 분, which is the same 분 that we used as the higher respect form of a noun, person, 사람. And the higher respect form of the verb 있다 is 계시다, 계시다. You've seen this before. 계시 is the stem. 계시어요 becomes 계셔요 or 계세요. Let's use 계세요. 거기 몇 분. 계세요? 거기 몇분 계세요? How many people are there? 거기 몇분 계세요? Sounds nice and polite. Let's recap what you've learned through lesson 3 to lesson 5 with this one page. We'll tell you a small tip on how to get familiar with the Korean sentence structure a little bit quicker. Let's make a short declarative sentence first. When you speak Korean, you should always remember that the subject or the topic of the sentence comes at the head of the sentence, no matter whether it's a declarative or an interrogative sentence. And a verb or an adjective as a predicate comes at the end of the sentence. So when you speak Korean and don't know how to start, just to find the subject or a topic and spit it out first. Let's say the subject is I, since we are making a declarative sentence first. 저 저 is the honorific form of the pronoun I in Korean. But fortunately, you don't really have to mention about the subject when you and the listener both know who you are talking about. Especially when the subject is the first person I or the second person you. Convenient, isn't it? 당신 당신 is the direct translation of the pronoun you in Korean. But you don't really use the pronoun you in a Korean honorific sentence. Yes, you can say never. You always get around using the pronoun you in a Korean honorific sentence. Unless you have a fight with a stranger or someone whom you don't know very well. Now you spit out the subject, what's next? If you feel like your brain is going blank and can't think of anything, you spit out any time-related word. Yes, don't think, just spit out any time-related word such as today, 오늘, now, 지금. Or yesterday, 어제. Yes, sometimes you need to add a particle, 에, to the time related words, such as next year, 내년 에, in the afternoon, 오후 에, or when you mention about the time. Then when do you add and when do you not add the particle 에? Let's say when you translate the time related adverb which consists of just one word, such as today, now or yesterday. Normally, you don't add a particle a. But when you translate the time-related phrase such as in the afternoon, in the morning, at 10 o'clock, or last year, next year, you add a particle a. Okay? It's much clearer then. But it's not a rule. You just can't think of it that way for now. No problem. After you spit out time-related word, you find any place-related word, especially the place where you actually took an action. For example, a country, region, province, city, area, house, shopping mall, or a school. They are all fine. Gangnam is the name of the district in Seoul, Korea. Let's say yesterday you did something in Gangnam. 
You know, you use the particle "에서" when you talk about the place where the action actually took place. 강남에서, 강남에서. Now you've already mentioned about time and place. Now this time, think about with whom you did this. Girlfriend, 여자친구. Boyfriend, 남자친구. Family, 가족. You can drop the possessive my or your when you and the listener both know whose girlfriend you are talking about. We learned that there are three groups of the particles you can use for the English preposition with in lesson 4. 여자친구랑 여자친구하고 여자친구와 And then, right before you end the sentence with a verb or an adjective, you put the word which is directly related to the verb or the adjective, such as an object, complement, or destination, or the way or method you do the verb or be adjective. If it's an object, you add a particle, 을, or, 를. If it's a destination, you add a particle, 에, or, 으로. You know the particle, 에, can be used for both time-related word and a destination or location. 저녁 밥 means Dinner. We are going to use it as an object. So let's add the object particle 을. 저녁 밥 을. Because 밥 has the final consonant. 저녁 밥 을. You know it actually sounds 저녁 밥을. 저녁 밥을. Because of 이응, the empty consonant that the particle 을 has. 저녁 밥을. And then let's complete the sentence with a verb or an adjective. 먹었어요. 먹었어요 is the past form of the verb eat. 먹어요. Okay? Again, drop the subject when the listener and the second person knows who you are talking about. And time-related word yesterday. 어제. Place-related word in 강남. 강남에서. With girlfriend. 여자친구랑 object dinner 저녁 밥을 verb eight 먹었어요 어제 강남에서 여자친구랑 저녁 밥을 먹었어요 yesterday in 강남 with girlfriend dinner eight 어제 강남에서 여자친구랑 저녁 밥을 먹었어요 yesterday I ate dinner with my girlfriend in 강남 it's nothing right you can do that Then, how do we turn this sentence into a question form? It can't be any easier. You just need to change the subject and add a question mark at the end. But you can drop the subject when you and the listener both know who the subject is. And you don't use the pronoun you in a Korean honorific sentence anyway. So just add a question mark at the end and make rising sound with the last letter yo. Did you eat dinner with your girlfriend yesterday in Gangnam? 어제 강남에서 여자친구랑 저녁밥을 먹었어요? Okay? Then let's make WH questions using the same sentence. When you make a WH question, you just need to replace the part you want to know with the Korean interrogative you learned. It's so simple. When you want to know the time-related part, you just need to position the interrogative when, 언제, at the position of the time-related word in a normal declarative sentence. So let's replace the word yesterday, 어제, with when, 언제, 언제, when, 언제, in 강남, 강남에서, with girlfriend, 여자친구랑, dinner, 저녁밥을, ate, 먹었어요? It's a question you make rising sound. 언제 강남에서 여자친구랑 저녁밥을 먹었어요? 언제 강남에서 여자친구랑 저녁밥을 먹었어요? When did you eat dinner with your girlfriend in Gangnam? We don't even have to explain about the rest of the sentences, right? We know you already understand this. Let's check them out quick together though. Needless to say, when you want to know where did someone eat dinner, with his girlfriend, 
in Gangnam, you just need to place the interrogative where, or the, in the position of the place-related word. What was the place-related word in this sentence? In Gangnam, Gangnam에서. So just swap Gangnam with 어디, yesterday, 어제, where, 어디에서. You don't omit the particle 에서. With girlfriend, 여자친구랑, dinner, 저녁밥을, ate, 먹었어요? 어제 어디에서 여자친구랑 저녁밥을 먹었어요? Where did you eat dinner with your girlfriend in Gangnam yesterday? Right? It's easy. When you want to know with whom the listener had dinner in Gangnam, replace girlfriend 여자친구 with who 누구 어제 강남에서 누구랑 저녁밥을 먹었어요? 어제 강남에서 누구랑 저녁밥을 먹었어요? With whom did you eat dinner in Gangnam yesterday? We are going through this quick in case you feel bored. Please understand. If you can't follow, please email us. We will explain about this again only for you. When you want to know what did the listener eat with his girlfriend in Gangnam yesterday, replace dinner with the interrogative what, 무엇, or 뭐, 뭐. 어제 강남에서 여자친구랑 무엇을 먹었어요? 어제 강남에서 여자친구랑 무엇을 먹었어요? When you use full version of what, 무엇, please do not omit the object particle, 을. You can use the short version of what, 뭐, and it sounds more natural. When you use the short version, 뭐, you can drop the object particle, 를. Remember, in Korean, shorter ones sound always better, especially in a real-life conversation. 어제 강남에서 여자친구랑 뭐 먹었어요? 뭐 먹었어요? 어제 강남에서 여자친구랑 뭐 먹었어요? Okay? You can even add why, where to this sentence. Why did you eat dinner with your girlfriend in Gangnam yesterday? And you can put why right after the subject. But there is no subject here. Therefore, you can put why at the head of the sentence then. 왜 어제 강남에서 여자친구랑 저녁밥을 먹었어요? 왜 어제 강남에서 여자친구랑 저녁밥을 먹었어요? You can even make a question with all the interrogative in one sentence. 언제, 어디에서, 누구랑, 뭐 먹었어요? 언제, 어디에서, 누구랑, 뭐 먹었어요? When, where, and what did you eat with whom? Now you understand much better about WH questions. We are so happy. Let's see a couple of things more and finish this lesson. What is the Korean word you can use when you did not hear what somebody said and you want them to repeat it? You say, excuse me, pardon, I beg your pardon, or sorry, in English, right? In Korean, it's much simpler than that. Do you remember how to say yes in Korean honorific sentence? Yes, 네 or 예. You just need to put a question mark to it and make rising sound. 네? 네? Or, 예? 예? It tells the speaker that you didn't hear what he or she has just said. Then let's learn how to say excuse me in Korean. You use excuse me in English to politely get someone's attention, especially when you are about to ask them a question or to apologize to someone when you have disturbed, interrupted them or you need to move past someone in a crowd. Koreans use the verb 신뢰하다 to beg someone's pardon. It actually means do something rude with discourtesy. So it's more like you admit the fact that you did something disrespectful than asking for pardon. In order to use this in a conversation, you need to add the honorifics 니다 or 요. 
신뢰합니다. 신뢰합니다. It's a formal honorific form with the formal honorific suffix 니다. I know you're right. We've never actually specifically learned about the formal honorific suffix 니다. But doesn't it sound a bit familiar in some reason? It's just me? Okay. 신뢰해요. 신뢰해요. It's a casual honorific form with the casual honorific suffix 요. Actually, 신뢰합니다 is preferred in a real life conversation because it's better to sound formal and polite when you say excuse me. You can use 신뢰합니다, almost the same usage of English phrase excuse me. Yes, you're right. You don't have to say the object me in Korean. Why? Well, it's mainly because 신뢰합니다 is like you're saying I am disrespectful in Korean. So there is no object here and you can drop or omit the subject when it's so obvious in a Korean sentence as we learned. Next. I am sorry. 죄송하다. 죄송하다 is the basic form of an adjective sorry. 죄송하다 looks like a verb, but it's actually an adjective in Korean too. It's about feeling, not an action. That's why it's an adjective. Anyway, you also need to add the honorific suffix 니다 or 요 to use it in a conversation. 죄송합니다. 죄송합니다. Sounds formal and heavier. 죄송해요. 죄송해요. Sounds a bit casual and lighter. Okay? We are almost done. Do you know you can make a short conversation even with a native Korean in Korean based on what you've learned from us? Yes, you can. You have learned a lot while you didn't realize it. We will show you how the conversation would go between a native Korean and you hypothetically. You can always start with 안녕하세요. Korean says 안녕하세요. You can say 안녕하세요 too. Korean says you from which country came? 어느 나라에서 오셨어요? You say from Canada came. 캐나다에서 왔어요. Korean says your name what? is 이름이 뭐예요? You say my name Michelle is 제 이름은 미셸이에요. Korean asks you tonight what is going to do? 오늘 밤뭐할 예정이에요? You answer with friends a movie will watch. 친구들이랑 영화 볼 거예요. Is there anything you didn't learn from us here? Okay. Start today. Have a conversation with your Korean friends. Make as many sentences as you can with the words you learned from us or new words you learned from other sources. And send us an email in Korean based on what you've learned. Then we'll answer with a correction and sentences you can understand based on what you've learned. But please don't use something you don't know. Okay? This is the end of lesson 5. See you in lesson 6 then. 안녕히 계세요. This is the end of lesson 5 and we will start lesson 6 in the next video. Lesson 6 is going to be mostly about modifiers. And it is the most important lesson among all 10 lessons. 그럼 다음 비디오에서 만나요. 안녕히 계세요.